I was getting, I was trying to kind of coordinate that, but then I um, never ended up making it out there. Uh, mm. I, you know, had my sights set on California because, I mean, you know, palm trees and bikinis, man. So I was all, <laughs> I was all about to trying to get out there, but I ended up going up to rainy Seattle instead. So I don't know how that worked <laughs> out. But. How was it working out with Matt Hume? Um, Matt, at that time, I mean, he was really had a great handle on, on, on mixing mixed martial arts. I mean, on mixing martial arts. I mean, he just, I mean, he had trained in everything individually. Uh, he had put it, put it all together. He was there in the early stages. He was there in Pancras. Uh, he was, you know, he put on the, he had his own sanctioning body, his own event called like UF, UFCF, I believe it was called. Um, and he was promoting big fights way back in the, in the, in like the, like the, the mid to late nineties. Um, so man, he really had a strong grasp of the idea and the, uh, you know, how mix, mixed, true mixed martial arts training should be approached. So that was uh, kind of invaluable uh, some of the time I spent up there. How was his instruction? It was good, but man, Matt was really like kind of old schoolish. Chris might, will probably know kind of where I'm going with some of the pancreas stuff. Um, man, Matt, like Matt had this thing where when you came up to join his gym, he had an initiation. He didn't tell you this, but he would, yeah. Yeah, like that, like that old Ken Shamrock style stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but see, Matt didn't make me do like a thousand jumping jacks and a thousand foot. Like he just beat the he just beat the crap out of me one night. And I didn't know that this was coming at all, man. I didn't know this was coming at all. We got done training with just the regular class. And he just nonchalantly walks out on the mat and just goes, let's, uh, let's, let's roll for a little bit. And I was like, yeah, okay. Cause you know, I'm this young, dumb kid that's just ready to <laughs> be a sponge and learn everything yeah. I can. And man, he just, I mean, he just destroyed me. He was just, he was putting his knee in my face and, and just crunching my face. He was, he, he just kept ripping my arm in a, in a Kimura. And at one point, he just grabbed me with his bare hand and just started choking me. Yeah, just choking me till I almost passed out. Um, dude, he just, he was like he was trying to kill me. I mean, like, like it was just uh, unbelievable. Uh, I mean, like, uh, and then after it was done, he probably did it for about 30 minutes. I mean, I couldn't do anything. I mean, I couldn't get away from him. He just, he just, just pulverized me. And then he just. And then the funny part was after he was done, I said, thanks. And you like shook his hand <laughs> and then just, I didn't know what else to do. I was just yeah. like, dude. He probably, what's wrong with this kid? Yeah. Hey, I, I saw that actually in Japan when I was there at Pancrates. I was staying there and remember seeing Suzuki just going against these young guys and choking them and they're kind of tapping and he's not really letting go. He waits till they're almost out and then push them around and get back up and he starts going right again. And I was kind of getting pissed at like, you're going to kill these guys, man. I didn't really understand what was going on, but they only wanted the toughest people. And if you couldn't deal with that, you quit. And if you could, right. you became a tough fighter. That, that was a thought process. And it, there's something to be said for, but man, it, it's a different world. You can't do that. Anymore. Yo, there was a guy, there was a guy from Chicago that used to do that. His name was John Lane Gacy. <laughs> <laughs> a little different. He, yeah, a little, little different sport. But uh, he definitely did that quite often, I might add. Um, well, well, the thing that, that Aaron doesn't <laughs> let you know is that, oh, you know, his day of training. So he's there, a sponge, trying to learn everything. And at that point, Hume had Barnett, Hallman. Dalavery. Dalavery. And, like, his UFC frontline guys, uh, you know, for, Barnett was a UFC heavyweight champion. So that's who he trained with. So it's not like, you know, you probably caught some lumps there, too. And then <laughs> you get Hugh to beat you up, you know. So I think I think only a little part of Matt really enjoys it. I think the other part is just philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not going to comment either way. I'm not sure what that what it falls into. But Matt, I tell you what, like, if there's 
I wish like a classic Matt Hume t-shirt existed because I would 100% buy one. I'm a huge fan of what it is he does. I'm a big fan of that guy. Um, now, 